ABBA has gone down in history as one of the most iconic music bands to have ever existed and the success would not have been possible without Bjorn Ulvaeus's carefully crafted guitar notes and Agnetha Falzkog's skillfully trained vocals. The couple formed half of the band and had a marriage as tumultuous as the oops and downs of the band itself. However, during the ongoing highs and lows of their relationship with each other and ABBA itself, there existed a forgotten truth, their little children. Now years later the consequences of their actions and the shifts in their priorities are out in the open as the couple's daughter, Linda Olveus, talks about what it was like being raised by two parents lost to fame. Linda was born to the couple in 1973, their first child, and her birth should have been a symbol of bliss and cause for celebration. But unfortunately for the little girl, it was reduced to an afterthought as both her parents were preparing for the upcoming Eurovision Song Contest. The pair was away for long periods of time and the responsibility of raising Linda fell mostly on the shoulders of her nanny. When these long days away from their daughter finally paid off and ABBA became the first Sweden band to win the contest with their hit song Waterloo, Agnetha and Bjorn finally decided it was time to return to their daughter. But as it turned out, they were too late. Upon their return, Linda failed to recognize either of them a heart-wrenching experience since she was only a year old. The couple seemed to recognize they had wronged their little daughter and described the experience as horrible, talking about how hard it was to do it all. This realization was temporary, or perhaps, it did not hit hard enough because soon after, the pair were once again working away, going on tours, performing, recording and practicing with the band and leaving their young kid again and again. Young Linda learned from childhood that she would always come secondary to her parents, both of whom prioritized their career over having a relationship with their daughter. And this was not a mere speculation but a fact acknowledged by the two. In an interview with a reporter in ABBA's documentary, Agnetha was asked about the conflict between motherhood and musical fame to which she answered that it was hard to choose since both her daughter and her band needed her. The only difference was that her daughter could be taken care of by someone else, so her importance was secondary as compared to ABBA that needed her primarily. The Eurovision contest was not a one-off incident and soon, ABBA's fame skyrocketed which left even less time for the pair to attend to their daughter. Agnetha recalled that the attention her career had received and the flights the couple had to take during this time to keep that attention on the band became a source of trauma to her later on. She had to leave her daughter even when she did not want to, and no matter how hard she and Bjorn tried to ensure they had separate flights, just so one of them could take care of Linda, the coordination kept on proving hard to do. This was also the reason for Agnetha developing an extreme fear of flying connected to parenthood. In her head there was always a voice saying if she and Bjorn traveled together, the plane would go down and there would be no one left for Linda to call her own. Despite these fears, the pair went on to have their second child Peter, and the quest for parental attention became even more challenging for Linda. Where her competition had been with her parents' career, it was now with another sibling, which created some distance between her brother and herself. But soon, her fears were addressed in another light. The only time Linda had felt any true love from her parents had been when she was indulging into music, and this was a reason why she made her musical debut at just eight years old. Releasing the album now a thousand Christmas candles are lit which she had been working on with her mother the previous year. But soon more important issues were on the rise and it was time for Linda to face the trials and tribulations of middle school. Later, as Linda was growing up, another set of concerns laid themselves out for her since she was the child of two famous stars. The moment she stepped foot into school, her fate was sealed. She faced relentless bullying from other kids who shouted ABBA songs from the top of their lungs to taunt her which upset her terribly at that age. Being a teenager already comes with many problems and several children are embarrassed of their parents to a certain degree. For Linda this was magnified a hundredfold and, in her own words, she was terribly ashamed of her parents. At a time where many teens would have died to be near the two stars, Linda could not put enough distance between herself and them. The constant bullying and teasing also led Linda to develop a problematic profile and her teens soon became a sequence of troubled years. She developed bulimia disorder as a result of these factors and developed an extremely unhealthy relationship with food. Her peers made her feel like an outcast and she felt like she did not belong anywhere. This loneliness, combined with the fact her parents were barely there when she was facing these issues since they were always needed elsewhere, resulted in Linda becoming involved with the wrong crowd. 
She was a wild kid, and the bad company was still company which made her feel like she at least had a group of people she could call her own. But this lifestyle was not sustainable, and actually pretty dangerous, so it was Linda's good fortune that she was saved from becoming a lost cause in the nick of time. What ended up saving her was moving to the countryside and reconnecting with nature. Over there she found good company in a pony named Mr. Johnson who became a constant in her recovery journey and she grew attached to. In the country she took time to heal her relationship with food and find what she truly loved doing which was acting. This newfound love led her to enroll in theater school to formally learn the craft and she was having a great time. But soon, things became challenging once again. Halfway through theater school she discovered she was pregnant with her first child, the father of whom was her boyfriend Jens Ekengren, a normal guy who worked at Vodafone, prepared to support his little family. Linda continued going to school despite her pregnancy but after she had her daughter, who she named Tilda, she decided to take a break for three years. It was at this time Linda had decided she would not repeat the mistakes her parents had done and always put her kids before her career in order to give them the best life she could. She took care to spend time with her little daughter and made sure she would not feel unwanted and rejected in her childhood like Linda had. It was only after the girl had grown up a little that Linda decided to continue her education and return to acting. Her patience paid off and soon she was getting acting gigs, establishing her name in the game as a talented screen actress. However, her success in her career was never a priority for her, as she always put her family before everything, remembering what her parents had failed to do and being determined that she would not do the same. She had two lovely daughters who were her whole world and she put them before all else, even as she continued her career and took roles in multiple successful films and TV series, including Under Solon, Quick and Labradden. She also did not hold a grudge against her parents, as she grew up and realized their perspectives, going on to participate in her mother's solo music releases such as her 2004 comeback single When You Walk in the Room. On her parents' end, they may not always have made the best choices but they did try to be there for her as much as they could. One example of this is that when they realized their daughter did not remember them after their three to four week tour following their Eurovision success, they decided to restrict all future tours to two weeks max so they would not be away so long their daughter would forget them. They also made sure to fly their daughter to longer tours so they could play with and meet her often. As it turns out, both the parents and the daughter had their misunderstandings, but what united them was their love for each other despite these differences. What made them family was their effort to be together despite all the factors dividing them which is what ultimately mattered the most. What is your favorite fun fact about one half of the ABBA family? Tell us in the comments below.